I'm Rhonda, Director of Groundwork Arts. Today we get to meet artist Ava Earhart, check out her art, and get a sneak peek behind the scenes. We're here with Ava in Desert Hot Springs. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming. Ava, um, you create these incredibly imaginative collages made from cut pieces of paper that are sometimes from encyclopedias, could be illustrations or texts, and then you combine them with other materials and create these kind of fantasy scenes that we aren't quite sure what's happening, but we find really intriguing. How would you describe your work? I like to think of them a little bit like riddles because I put a lot of things together. Hopefully things kind of tie together in a way where people start thinking like, oh, there, there could be a story where this meets up with that. So I usually make the image first and then I'll go to a, a science book or I have a few children's storybooks and I'll just start perusing lines and I want one that sort of, you know, has some sense to it, but really is also very meaningless in a way so that one can put their own meaning in it. The word loneliness and boredom and fear, those are pretty potent words and I'm sure I was, you know, maybe there was some of that emotion going on or or maybe I want people to think about those emotions when they're looking at this very red thing. I'm wondering if this is a place for you to express your emotions. Is it somewhat autobiographical or not? I don't like it to feel too raw or connected to myself. I think that's safe for me. Where is this text coming from? Sometimes I would just write down the first thing that would come to mind. And I like how it looks. Like I could fill a page with, you know, thoughts or lines and you know at thinking about students again I was like wouldn't it be great if they could take a sheet of homework and just choose their given shape and just cover it with that shape anything that's scary about making art people judging it is always scary right um and maybe I'm particularly scared of it because I, I think I'm a critical person even though I I think I'm a warm, kind, open person. Like sometimes I'll look at art and I don't like it. And so then there's the fear, someone will look at your art and they'll have that feeling that you had when you looked at that person's art, you know? What were some of your early influences? I guess maybe it starts when you see something that you really like or you start to be more observant. Maybe that's the first step. So my dad, was an influence in that for sure in that he would talk about things that he'd see like beautiful shadows or repetition of lines in a structure you know for driving around or even like if we got together and photograph he'd photograph a manhole cover that's rusty or you know just so I'm I think the very first steps of becoming an artist is like noticing things and seeing what caught my eye, which was probably very similar to what caught my dad's eye. There is no plan, just making lines on a piece of paper. These are things, you know, that didn't go anywhere. I don't like them. This morning I was looking at this, I was like, what? What, is, what are these bright colors? But then this happened, you know, as I'm sorting, I'm like, oh, this came out and I was like, you know, maybe this somehow could fit in here. Sometimes I wish I had more of a plan. Like I've got a lot of cut out things and I could probably spend forever trying to make a plan for how they would go together. But sometimes it just has to do with, with what's on my table at the moment. You have titles in your work. Yeah. They seem direct and leading. Yes. Yeah. I don't rem I couldn't tell you the titles of these. I came up with them very quickly, but I like coming up with titles because they seem like, like you say, leading. Lately, this is how I, I might work. I, I'll flip through it and I'll just, you know, be like, wow, oh, okay. A sentence, if I'm, if I'm reading sentences, maybe there's one that seems very heavy or ominous. You know, you just change the meaning of what you're seeing by what you're putting it adjacent to. It's, there's a 
lot of feelings of dissatisfaction when I'm doing it too, where I'm just like, why, what goes with this? Nothing goes with this. And then it's almost like when I'm making things, if I don't like it, I can keep going. I can cut it up. I can take this corner. Maybe this corner is worth saving. It's almost like a 3D collage or assemblage or... I don't know the terms, but yes, I call it the 3D thing that I made, but assemblage, you know, I think this rock was probably from the backyard. This guy was probably from a first aid book that I got. And then I think I'd probably start with the box itself, you know, and just, I love texture and repetition and pattern. There's something about looking inside something that feels you know, like a mystery. I think about um, Joseph Cornell. A number of years ago, I lived in Chicago and I think there's a room in the Art Institute that has his boxes. And I, maybe because they're found objects that look like they've had past lives attached to something else. And he took them out of their lives and he made an environment for them. Like this is a whole world in here. And I don't know what that world is, but it's beautiful, it's mysterious, it's magical. When you're a graphic designer, I think you are always thinking about message. With collage, you know, I am not, I'm not trying to communicate anything clearly. You know, I'm almost trying to perplex. If you were going to give some advice to a young artist starting out, what would you say? Be prepared for all the emotions all the emotions, the good ones, the bad ones. Ava, I wanted to thank you so much for um, having us come into your space and especially sharing your process and pieces that aren't done and how you put it all together. It's really very special. Thank you for coming.